Hi guys, it's Kelly. I am going to do a quick video here. Um, it's kind of a follow-up to um, another lady that I found on YouTube who I just love her. Her name is on YouTube. It's Nurse Tara 4 and she was just as excited as I was to get all of our um, delusion spray. I'm going to get you a little angled here. I finally have all mine. I'm so excited. So I've been trying to play and of course I played last night in my art journal and my first try at it was really disappointing because um, yeah I kind of overdid it. So <laughs> anyway all my colors turned out kind of weird. I just wasn't happy with the page that I did so I went up tearing it out of my journal and starting over. And it's my dirt journal and I can do that darn it. <laughs> so anyway hopefully my camera will record right. So what I have here, um, Nurse Tara 4 has an excellent video where she takes little tags and she shows you, she just sprays each color and shows you how magnificent they are. They are very vibrant colors. They're fantastic. And um, she does a great job doing that. We were kind of talking about that beforehand while we were waiting. The only two that she was missing that I wanted to show you guys, just the simple spray and a simple tag, the only two that she was missing was Melted Chocolate and squeezed orange and these came together in a stack so I followed Nurse Tara 04's um, advice I just used my Cricut and printed out a bunch or cut out a bunch of little tags so I just want to spray these for you just so you can kind of see these colors if you want to see all of these colors just sprayed outright go check out um, Nurse Tara 04 and um, she does a great job just kind of showing it off and doing a review and letting you know. So what I've noticed when you first get these, I like to kind of spray it first, like either in the trash or on a paper towel or something, because it'll squirt out kind of strong. I've used this already, so it probably won't do that, but I'll just show you real quick. So that right there, look how vibrant that is. Just gorgeous. My lighting isn't the best in here. Sorry about that. Let's see. That might overdo it. But this is the squeezed orange. And then this right here is the melted chocolate. I really, really like this one. Oops, I'm going to spray it right on that one. Okay, my sprayer's clogged already. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I'm just going to let that happen. <laughs> anyway, so there it is. Melted chocolate. It didn't spray as well as I'd like it to, so I'm going to rub that off and see if I can get a little bit better and show you guys. Look how, I mean, the more you put on there, the more concentrated it is, so the more color you're going to get, but look how the, the it moves around, and then when you see it with water, things start getting really crazy. Oops. So there, just let it bleed around. Really, really cool. And then I'm going to mix them together, just for the heck of it, because I can. There you go. So really, really cool. That's that's kind of what it looks like with some water on there too. You can blend them all together. So there's those two colors really quick. They're so vibrant. And then just kind of to tone them down, you just add a little bit of water in it if it's and play with it and let them bleed around until you get the look that you want. But here's my thing, um, and what I wanted to kind of share with you guys. I haven't. I'm just winging this, guys. So I did some preparing here, and what I did was. Like I, I'm new to the mixed media um, deal, and and all of these different things kind of intimidate me. And hopefully, I'm gonna don't mind my messy table. But between all of the different mediums that you can use, the modeling paste, the gesso, the matte medium, the Mod Podge, the clear gesso, and all these different things, how do all these inks interact with that? And how do they? Does the color change? How does that work? So what I've done here is I used this is a sheet of paper that's it's actually already been treated probably wasn't the best way but it's already um, journaling paper and what I did hopefully you guys can see is I put little different mediums on here so this right here this little area here is white gesso this is matte medium this is Mod Podge it's the matte Mod Podge I don't have any glossy finishes I wish I did so I could show you but um, this is clear gesso, just a little spot with clear gesso. I just put some acrylic paint on, and then this is modeling paste. You can probably see there's some dimension there. So I want to see how these inks 
are going to act on top of all these different mediums. And then I've also done some tags here to kind of show if we want to do different colors on them. Um, and they're kind of labeled with what I've treated them with. Just so we can kind of learn together how these inks are going to work, whether it's with water or without water, and how they're going to work on all these different mediums that when you're collaging and you're doing that kind of stuff, um, how they're going to act. So we'll just play with it and we'll see what happens. So, and what I want to kind of do, what I think would be real, a good way to demonstrate it would be to use the same color across a couple of them and just to see how the, how it, how it's a little different. And I have all the colors. Um, what I don't have is her, um, the white one that has the mixing ball in it. I want to get that because that can kind of turn these colors, which are so vibrant, which I love, but sometimes you need a softer tone of the color and she has this white opaque spray and um, I'm sure it's like Tim Holtz uh, what am I what's the name of it it's the white picket fence I believe it is I think it has that same type of um, interaction but um, I saw Diane Reevely's, um video where she was showing the white and how it really kind of added a pastel tone and I really like that so that will be my next thing that I want to get but um, what I think I'll do I think I'll use um, I'm really liking the vibrant turquoise so let's try that we'll try that one first on here and we'll see what happens so I'm gonna lay this down just to catch some of it and this time I'm not gonna put any water on it first Normally, what I've liked, what I found that I really like, is to spray it first with water, just like Diane does, and then that kind of gets the colors mixing together. But I don't want to do that when I'm doing um, these different type of mediums, and um, like the gesso and the matte medium and that kind of stuff. I just want to see what it's going to do first. So I'm just going to spray it on there, and you can see how that's moving around, right? That is the white gesso with a little bit of texture on it. And you can see, let me move that a little closer, how it's moving around and it's, it's still coloring the gesso. And that's kind of what, you know, we kind of need to know. Is it going to color the gesso? Is it going to resist? What's it going to do? So that is really, really cool. I really like that. So let's do the same one, Vibrant Turquoise, on matte medium. This little circle here is the matte medium. Very, very cool. Pretty much the same thing. I'll try some different colors on here now. Let's try like a yellow. Let's try lemon zest. And we'll try that. This is the Mod Podge, and it's matte Mod Podge, it's not gloss. I don't know if the gloss would be different. Maybe it would, who knows? We'll just have to play and try and see what we think. I'm gonna blot this just so I don't, well, maybe I won't, because I'm gonna spray some water. Look at that yellow, that is nuts. That's crazy. Love it. But yeah, so this way we get to kind of see, like if I'm going to do some collaging and then I spray my ink on, after I put some medium on there, some Mod Podge, how is it going to interact? The Mod Podge is kind of resisting it though. It does take a little bit of the color, but hopefully, I'm demonstrating that well, hopefully you can see that it is, it does have more of a resist. Interesting. And then clear gesso. The clear gesso, obviously, I mean, you treat your paper with gesso so that it accepts this kind of stuff. So I know it's gonna, I know that it's gonna take that color, but to what degree is is the question? Because here's here's the comparison. Hopefully, I'm not going too fast. So Mod Podge resists it mainly, okay? So you guys probably already know this, but I mean, if we're new to to the mixed media stuff, I mean, we gotta, you just gotta play, and sometimes it can get expensive to play. So clear gesso obviously soaks it in. But this is just plain paper, okay? It's not treated it's not treated with gesso, it's just plain white cardstock. I'm going to put that on there. And it soaks it in and it's still just as gorgeous. But it does have a little different tendencies. It's a little lighter. It's a little less vibrant on there. So there's a comparison of the yellows. Hopefully my lighting is working out. So, hmm, interesting. Interesting how that works. 
Let's do, let's do black. Let's do a complete total contrast here. This is the, this little circle here is the modeling paste. So let's see what happens when I do that one. Modeling paste just like the gesso, it's gonna soak that up real good. And then the paper around it that is, that is still pre-treated. I really like that, that is very cool. And then paint. I mean, this is just blue because it's the first one I grabbed. But um, what color should I use? Let's use bubblegum pink because it's just fun to say bubblegum pink. And my question is, what does it do to the integrity of the original color that I have on there? And as you can see, hmm, makes it a little deeper. But interesting. So that's kind of how it's going to react, react with all these different the different mediums that are out there, and just plain paper, and how that's going to work. But now that we know that it does that, what I want to know is what happens when I add water and I want to start blending and mixing these colors. This is really kind of cool. What's happening with the matte medium here? Because okay, and look, the bubblegum pink is so not pink. It's so beyond pink. <laughs> But can you guys see the little speckles of the spray of the bubblegum pink and the turquoise? It almost takes a neon effect. I'm hoping that you're seeing that. It almost looks neon when you mix those. And that's just straight on spraying it on. That's without watering it down. So let's see what happens. This is just plain water. Am I in? Yeah. Look at that. It starts blending and working around. I'm going to add it all over the place for Crown Lab. I'm just going to go crazy. There's my bubblegum pink mixing in with my lemon zest and just sparkling onto those other ones. Look at how crazy that is. And then I, I'm just going to take one of my little tags and work it on there. It's not treated. Look at that. That is so pretty. These are just awesome, awesome inks. I really like them. I've just been playing with them and having fun and I'm gonna do some yellow. And some more of that pink because that pink is just making me crazy. So there's another kind of like really cool marbling effect. And then if I wanted more color on there, I would just add some more on there. Just keep spraying it until I get what I want. And then if I had too much on there and I decided to blot it off, like Diane would say, I'd use my chick my kitchen roll. She kills me. My God, I love listening to her accent. But you just blot it off and you're seeing what's resisting and what's not. So so the um <laughs> what did I have on there? The matte medium is gonna resist that color more. It's not gonna take it on. The gesso is gonna tone it down a little bit. Your white gesso. Your, mat, your um, Mod Podge is going to kind of be a resist and then it looks like it's bleeding under the paper there and it's bleeding under because the ink, as you can see on the other side of the paper, see how it, it really saturates that paper. So what you're seeing, that can be used in so many different ways, but what you're seeing is the, the color that's coming through underneath, that's just seeping through where there is no mat, uh, where there is no Mod Podge. So um, you know, again, if you're depending on your where you are with your comfort level with dealing with all the different mix, mixed medias that you can use, you know, you, you wouldn't want to if you're going to ink it, you're going to ink it first, and then you're going to seal it with your with your Mod Podge. So you're not going to want to. I mean, hopefully that answers some questions because I had had made those mistakes before to where I would just. I, I wouldn't figure out what I was going to do until later and then I would add my ink after I had already put some Mod Podge down and it resists and I'm not getting the look that I want. So hopefully this answers some questions. Um, it's answering questions for me so we're just figuring this out together but the clear gesso just takes the true color I think but again you get a little shading difference because it saturates the paper underneath so it comes up underneath that gesso. So and then the acrylic paint I think it still holds its color integrity. It might get a little richer depending on what colors you choose. But, um, and then the molding paste, 
that kind of doesn't keep the true color either. You know, it kind of takes the same as the white gesso. It kind of lightens it up a little bit. So, there we go. So hopefully that answers some questions. And this is some of the stuff that I used in case you guys aren't familiar with this stuff. This is just what I, you can get all different brands, but um, this is just the Liquitex modeling paste. And that's this black area, okay? And that's, you know, what you use for all the texture really rich texture. This is just white gesso by Liquitex and it's really really thick so it adds a lot again really nice texture for stenciling. The matte medium this is really good when you're doing your collaging. I like that. Mod Podge as everyone knows. And then this is the clear gesso and I really like the clear gesso um, for pretty obvious reasons but you know if I'm going to ink behind it um, I want those colors to show through. The white gesso is is white. You know, it's going to cover everything up. This um, keeps my colors in the background true. So, but still, um, will seal it up for me. So, it depends on when you would want to use that. But this is not always the easiest to find in the local stores. So anyway, so there is the comparison on one sheet of paper. And then what I wanted to do too. Hopefully, I don't run out of time. And these are my cool little tags that I did. Let me get another paper towel here. But I have these pre-treated little tags, okay? This one has white gesso on it. And I have gesso up to this point, maybe you can see. I'm not sure. But there's white gesso here and then just plain paper here. So I'm gonna do it with water first, okay? And this already has the white gesso on it. So I'm gonna load it with some water first and then we'll use crushed grape you see how that crushed grape like spit out first? I don't like that. So when you first use them, you might, you know, you might not want that, but it's up to you. Then I'll just take another blank tag and just put it on there and soak that up. Because I'll use these little tags for something. I don't know what, but I will. Ooh, pretty. Now that is purple. You see the difference? Plain paper, no water. Paper with this is plain paper and this is the white gesso. So you do get some color variations. So maybe if you want a more pastel y look, you can just mix it with the gesso, or if you don't have the white like I want to get. So there's that. Modeling paste we already did. I want to see what happens with the paint when I add to the when I add water to the paint. I want to see what happens then. So, and let's use, let's use, hmm, let's use red. This is post, post box red. Mmm. You know, Nurse Tara 04 is right, it does. It looks just like blood. <laughs> it's like fresh blood. <laughs> Here, let's pull that back off. Oh, hello. I'm stuck. Hmm. Maybe I can look at that, what you get when you pull it off of the paper towel. I haven't tried that yet. That's interesting. There we go. So look, you still keep your color and then you just get, so the paint kind of resists a little bit and then you can just wipe it all right off. You might get little bits of the color on there, just a little bit. But if I didn't like it, I, I'm sure I could just spray that sucker right off. And only keep what I want. So, I was really curious to know what happened with the acrylic paint. So, there we go. And we already know that Mod Podge resists. And this is an all clear gesso tag. Let's try that with water first. And what color have I not used? Let's use, ooh, the, oh, the London blue. It's so pretty. So pretty. So let's try that. London blue. This has some Mod Podge down here, so I'm just going to soak up some of that ink. And see what happens with that. Look at that blue. That is just so vibrant. And again, the Mod Podge will resist, so that's kind of cool. And again, you guys might already know that. So just beginners who don't, 
I hope this is being helpful. And then look, you can just rub that off. So that's the Mod Podge. And this is just the clear gesso in the background with some nice texture back there. There you go. I feel like I'm wasting so much ink, but that's just kind of the way that, I don't know, it's kind of how these work out. So there you go. I think that's pretty good demonstrating you know, what happens with them and kind of what happens with water. So let's say that this one, am I still recording? Okay, this red one here, I wanted to tone it down a little bit and add some water and we'll see how that works out. And it's kind of already saturated. But it does, the water will bring down some of that color even after it's already dried. And this ink does dry a little faster than I anticipated. Not as quick as like an alcohol ink would, but that will tone that color down just by adding water. So, and let's see what happens to this one. It's still a little wet. Let's see what happens to this one when it's on. This is the half white gesso. And the white gesso really takes that color, but look, it, it does. Yeah, I like that effect. So, I've got lots of ideas for that. So there we go. So anyway, I hope this kind of helps because these are really vibrant colors, and if you're used to, I'm really tone. I really lean more towards the um, the more muted colors and the, the shabby vintage type of colors. So this is really, really stretching it for me. But as some of you that follow me will know, I am doing the art journal adventure with my book. So hopefully, I'll wind up the next page. I'll keep, even if I don't like it. I'm committed to it. I'm just going to keep it. So I hope this has answered some questions on how the inks interact with different things, how they interact with water, how they interact with all the different mediums that we have. And um, play with it. Love them. Love all the colors. They're so vibrant. So um, have fun with it. And let me know if you have any questions. And love to hear from you guys. Leave me a comment if you can. Thanks. And hi, Nurse Tara 04. You did a great video. Appreciate it. And I hope to hear from you soon.